Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of Digital Marketing Fastlane. Today we have Mike Rhodes from Web Savvy. Hey Mike, how are you doing today? Very good, Kevin. Yeah, Web Savvy and Agency Savvy all the way down here in Australia. Thanks for having me on. Mike, you have probably one of the best books out there on Google Ads. Of course, it's called The Ultimate Guide to Google Ads. Mike, I know we talked a little bit about the podcast, at least for you, starting Google Ads, your own agency start, and maybe talk a little about your background. I always knew I would have my own business, just like yourself, I think. Yeah. Fell into it kind of by mistake. I had left the UK. I'd been working in aviation, yeah. basically a snowboard bum that flew helicopters every now yeah. and again. It was fun, but I knew I didn't want to live in England. Left for Australia, thought I'd pop into New Zealand for yeah. three weeks on the way. Ended up staying three years. And ended up starting my first business there, which which worked because a mate handed me two books, Cashflow yeah. Quadrant by Kiyosaki and The E-Myth by Michael uh, Gerber. I love that book, by the way. E-Myth oh. is amazing. And it just systemized this yeah. business. Systemized everything. It. Yeah, everything. So I had it for a year and a half and I worked 12 shifts in entirety and a year and a half, built it up, sold it, yeah. moved to Sydney. And through this bizarre chain of events, through going to a Tony Robbins seminar, leaving with my hair on fire, writing this big letter to Michael Gerber yeah. himself, and then six weeks later getting a call from Gerber and yeah. being invited to California to go train with him and his team. I just sold my business, had yeah. a chunk of change. I thought I was semi-retired. Yeah. So I flew to California at like yeah. two days notice and hung out with him and his team for a week yeah. and became an Emith coach, an Emith consultant. Um, and that's what I was doing yeah. for yeah. a little while after that. And I sucked at it because I would walk into all these businesses wanting to systemize them yeah. and they would go, mate, mate, just stop yeah. there. I just need more customers. Can yeah. you get me more customers? I'm like, yes, yeah. there are modules. You know, this is Gerber. Yeah. It's a system. It's module five is lead yeah. generation. Well, when do we get to module five? Week five. I'm like, well, usually about month 10, yeah. unless we can just buy module five. Sorry, can't just sell you module five. It's Gerber. It's a system. Yeah. So I would get thrown out of these offices yeah. all the time. And then I saw this bloke, Perry Marshall, yeah. speak and talk about Google Ads. This is really, really early days. 2004, I'm yeah. not that old. I went, oh my God, this is what all of these businesses that are throwing me out of their offices, this is what they want and mm -hmm. need. Only show an ad to the people that are searching for what you sell. Yep. And then only pay. They click on your ad. This is awesome. Yeah. So I pretty much dropped Gerber at that point. The agency that day, but ran back to my mastermind hair yeah. on fire, like trying to, trying to tell everybody I could about this but, amazing thing called Google yeah. ads. And I kind of had a similar experience where nine out of 10 people would say, mate, I don't really care how it bloody works. Just do Jeez. it for me. Google ads, when it first came out, it was this crazy thing. You could search for something and you could literally put your product or service in front of someone looking for that. For now, it's so obvious. 10 years ago, yeah. really... all these businesses, they were doing yellow pages, local radio, if they had lots of cash, box drop. If you build it, I hope they will come. They weren't really doing any yeah. kind of marketing. It was really yeah. hope and pray and or spray and pray with some yeah, radio. Yeah, essentially what it was, yeah. And even and now, personalized marketing, but Google Ads, it's essentially personalized marketing because you're looking for something. It's not this random thing. See this whole big trend now, personalized marketing. I'm like, Google Ads has been that 10 years. You're searching for right. cats, you're probably gonna get cat products. You let your intent be known by yep. the websites you visit and by the things you type into Google. Google yep. knows more about us than the God of your choice or your partner. It knows an awful lot about us, but we reveal that about ourselves. For anybody that's listening is a true crime fanatic, there's a reason why they look through your searches. He literally has everything you're going to be doing on that search history because it's literally your mind searching for things. I pray yeah. to God no one looks at my search engine history because I look up the craziest well, stuff. It, it kind of reveals your true self. You ask things of Google that you would never ask, never ask. a human being in your life. You would yep. never say that to your parents. I mean, there's some things you probably your wouldn't spouse, say to yeah. your partner or your team or it reveals a lot. Obviously, I do marketing, you do marketing. People always still ask us, oh, are my customers still on Google? Yeah. So they're not going to click the ads because I don't click the ads. I yes. always, always scroll past them. Aren't they going to do that? $50 billion every three months because people click on ads. Sometimes consumers and people we work with probably don't realize that they're not their own target customers, even though they're the yes. ones creating the product. Yes. And sometimes getting out of that mindset is so hard for them. And that's why they come to agencies like us or hire other people. Just let me market and you need an expert to help you grow that. From Gerber and his team, they used to sort of have this visual of the mirror, but being too close, holding your hand yep. right in front of your face and going like, they are too close to this. You're going to help them see what's around. That was true, whether it was small business yep. coaching and consulting, but it's also true definitely with yeah. marketing. As true. marketers too, we tend to suck marketing our yeah. own business because we're yeah. too close to it. It's so true because 
at least for my show, we do these brand audits of other companies. It's like so snarky on them. I know this is a trick, but people listening, this stuff actually does work. Use them, do it. Final sale. I know it's not a final sale, but it works, right? I was listening to you and Eric last night, the Scottish Lord one. Yeah, and you were yeah, yeah. Pulling it apart. I was only listening. I, I couldn't see the visuals. Great. It was yeah, very yeah. entertaining. This is how I think, and this is how I do, but trust me, like stuff like this works. Let's talk about Google ads. So yeah. what do you see right now that's happening in Google ads, this whole ecosystem of Google, if Google ads also includes YouTube ads, that's their partner. Yeah. YouTube, Gmail, which also Gmail. has a billion users per month. Gmail ads are changing later on this year. They're, oh, they're, they are. They're getting rid of Gmail ads July one. Existing Gmail ads will yeah. continue to run. Well, they've been trying to push this new type of ad called a discovery ad on the Google app on your phone, which is called the discover uh, feed. You can still see those on an iPhone yeah. too. If you have the Google app on an iPhone, okay. but they are sort of more Android. These ads are more native in appearance. So think about your old Taboola Outbrain style yeah, yeah. ad, got to be a yeah. bit more catchy, got eye-catching graphics, yeah. that sort of ad showing up in your feed in the Google app. And they're going to replace forcing the replacement yeah. of Gmail. So discover ads already show in Gmail. They also show on YouTube oh, okay. and in that app. And so yeah. they're trying to force people to use that discovery campaign yeah. more by retiring Gmail, which is a shame. Gmail ads yeah. have worked really well for us for a long time. Existing I, I, Gmail ads will continue to run. You just won't be able to edit them. I thought Gmail ads would be good too, because it's kind of really native ad. If people have not done it, if you click on it, it looks like an email, which is great. Across the top of yeah, your feed. Too. They're a little bit harder to manage. A lot of people will see this click-through rate of 50% and go, whoa, I'm yeah. a rock star. Yeah. But it's that's the click-through rate from the little closed thing, ad yeah. through to the expanded ad. What you've really got to work on is get yeah. that click-through rate from that, that main expanded ad through to your lander. Yep. That can be a little harder, but it's cheap traffic. You're yeah, getting cheap. people right you know, when they're in the email. And you can mix those ads with your shopping feed. Google also have shopping is shopping feeds awesome, an area yeah. that we love to play with. Particularly when I come to the States, I meet so many retailers that all in on one channel. Typically, yep. that's Facebook. Sometimes yep. it's Amazon. But they won't be running Google Shopping ad. A lot of people, if you're looking for a physical product, a lot of people start on Amazon. You know, more yeah. people are prime members than voted in the 2016. Yeah. A lot of people are still searching Google for those things every day. And it is just one of the best channels. You know, those ads convert yeah. well because people have context. They're people, seeing a picture of yeah. the product they're looking for. They're seeing your little description, your price, your store yeah. name. And when they click through, obviously you're taking them directly to the product page, not a category page or the home page, yep. but they do tend to convert. Well, consumers love them, but Google love them because obviously yeah. they're making a lot of money. Um, so they're starting to put those shopping ads in more and more places. You're going to yeah. see them even more on YouTube, on display yeah, sites. Yeah, I think so too. And these discovery campaigns. Obviously Google knows that Amazon's a big competitor. Amazon ad business is going through the roof. I sometimes think Google maybe should be building out e-commerce thing on their platform where you can fully check out on Google. They want your wallet information. They want all this stuff. And, and just to keep in with that experience, clicking landing page, a lot of businesses have no clue what to put on their landing page. Let's just make it a seamless experience, kind of like Amazon, where this is what you're going to put because we've done the testing for you. You just need to yeah. give us the good images, the copy, and we'll this sort of manage. And they're obviously doing all the testing for yeah. you. you know, there's some great posts out there of just how that add to cart button yeah. has changed over the years. I read once that they can run a statistically significant test in about 43 seconds. Yeah. They wouldn't because yeah. obviously that yeah. 43 seconds could be very different to that 43 seconds, yeah. to that one, to that one. They wouldn't do that, but they have that much traffic that they can that do. That much it. traffic. Google are definitely heading in that direction yeah. as are Facebook. My worry with that, for retailers is it becomes a race to the bottom. I yep. mean, already on Amazon, right? You, all yeah. of these silly little price wars, which yeah. if I think back to when I started Google ads was 17 years ago, yeah. God, old, <laughs> we had bid jamming and yeah. particularly on Yahoo, where you could see the other person's <sighs> bid, silly little game of, if I can see that you're bidding, bidding. three bucks, then I'm going to bid three dollars and one cent or something mm -hmm. to force you to pay three bucks and then then you're going to move just ahead of me and then i'm going to move just below you if i can see you're bidding three bucks i would bid 2.99 it's yeah. a long time ago since i played these games yeah because i know the guy below me is bidding 150 so i'm only going to pay 151 but yep. by bidding 2.99 i force you to pay three bucks you like, see me doing that so you change your bid to 2.98 to force yeah. me to pay my 2.99 
and on it went until they decided, oh, maybe we should hide the bids. For the, all these bidding, there's target CPA. Is that why there's all this stuff now? Because Google doesn't really want you to do bid based, but more of like action based. Is that what you're thinking about? It's, or They really have drunk the Kool-Aid and they really, really strongly believe in the power of their machine learning. They yeah. believe that we idiot humans will just mess things up yeah. if we get in the way. So we're starting to see more and more where Google won't even give us the data because yeah. they're silly little humans on the other end will yeah. ridiculous decisions based yeah. on this little tiny bit of data that we give them and they're going to just mess everything up. And they really believe just get out of our way. We're way smarter than you are. Yeah. Let us do it. That requires an awful lot of trust because we've all seen over the years, people that have been in this game as long as we have, they do some interesting things every now and again, yeah. which many people in the market, I don't have a good lawyer, so I'm not going to say it me, but many <laughs> people in the market would classify as a money grab and you yep. Google, you're just doing this to yep. take more money out of the market. I mean, there are so many of these over the years. I got into this yeah. game partly because I'm a massive control freak. I'm, I've got two kids now, so I'm learning yeah. how not to be. You have to give up this illusion of control because Google are taking that control away. The yep. asymmetry of data just gets worse and worse yeah. all the time. They're, they're removing data. They give us little bits just to keep us happy. You know, pat us on our head. We are heading towards a world where it's almost going to be like Google say, look, give us your credit card, yeah. give us the feed out of zero, and we'll do everything in between. We'll tell you what's profitable. You just let and, us spend your money for you. And, and well, yeah, I don't yeah. really want to do that yet. People listening, probably SEO has kind of been like that for like a while where we used to get so much data as SEO guys. This is the keyword right. you're searching for. This is what you're doing. It. And then all of a sudden Google actually security features. We're not going to show you that privacy reasons. Yeah. But by the way, yeah. if you're willing to spend money over on Google ads, we'll give you all of that data. We'll give you all the keywords. So they did a similar thing in the Google ads world, September the 2nd of yeah. last year, they started hiding quote unquote, insignificant mm. search queries from the search query report. And they did it under the guise of privacy. But I've been looking at search query reports for a very, very long yeah. time. And I can count on one hand the number of times I have seen a phone number or an address, yeah. personally identifiable information in a search query. And it would be very, very easy very for them tiny, to hide yeah. that little bit, but still yeah. give us data. And this is really having an impact, particularly on small advertisers. I saw a tweet from someone the other day, had only 12 conversions last month, but you know, wow. for them, that's wonderful. That's, good, and that's, yeah. that's one of the beautiful things about Google ads is, is the little guy can compete with the big guy because it's all about relevance and not with the biggest wallet wins. But 12 conversions of that, 10 of the 12 converting search queries were hidden, insignificant. How the hell do you optimize anything when 80, 90% of your data is hidden? It's never going to change. The wonderful guys at Marketing O'Clock created a petition for this. I pushed yeah. it round and got Ryan Dice nicely that Ryan Dice would send it out to all of his people and Perry yeah. sent it out to his people. And we managed to get quite a few thousand signatures on that. But Google aren't going to care. I wanted to create a little bit of noise, but there's no point trying to fight. We just have to learn how to live in this new world of Google. We have all the data and we have to work around that. We have to work out how to play with the smart machine and not keep fighting. When Google first started, they were guys like us. They wanted us to come into their platform, bring your client's budget here. But now I always think it's a monopoly. And now they know that businesses need to be on there or else you're going to get screwed. It's the same thing with Amazon. Amazon was this too, where in the beginning, FBA, you can make so much mm -hmm. money. And then all of a sudden it's okay. Now you have this fee, you have this fee. Now the sentiment, I need to be on Amazon because if I'm not half my customers are not going to buy tech companies is, have this weird so control. But it is a race to the bottom, isn't yeah. it? Because that one cent difference makes yep. such a difference on Amazon. You're already seeing it with Google Shopping. If yeah. you decrease your price yep. just a little bit less than competitors for the same price, Google are going to put yep. you in that top left position where we know are going to get most of the clicks, even though, again, that's yeah. not data that comes out of the Google system. You know, other people have done the analysis of that. There's a great agency in Europe, Creolytics, run by oh, this maybe. wonderfully yeah. smart guy, Andreas. You should get him on the podcast. Yeah. He's really, really smart. And he's got this slide where he showed that for yeah. one of his clients, a 5% increase in price on a product led to a 60% decrease in click. There's little change. So it becomes a race to the bottom. It and is. yeah, where this whole bit started was you talking about when will Google have their own shopping yeah. basket? And they have that, they're trialing it. Facebook will be the same. You won't need yeah. to leave the platform to buy, to which of course, it, yeah. you know, all the Chinese apps have yeah. that too. Want to control everything. We'll be That's buying inside Messenger. Google. Google. 
buying inside WhatsApp. We'll be buying probably inside Gmail or, or YouTube yeah. at some point in the near-ish future yeah. from multiple merchants adding stuff to our yeah. bag. And then at some point when we're ready, checking out and Google will go off and send its AIs to go fill out. Maybe it'll start with all of that shopping cart. Maybe it'll all just be an API call. And yeah. bang, 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 you've just bought five different things from five different retailers. It, It'll become it, convenient and we'll give up more privacy. More and, privacy. Because yeah, we love day, convenience. Yeah. It's something I think about too, because when it's a price to the bottom, I'm not the CEO of Google, I'll probably never be, but all these retailers are just lowering their pricing. That means their margin is going to be lower. That means they're yeah. not going to have any money to spend on our platform. Maybe we should do something so it's not just this but price I don't war. Yeah. care about that individual yeah. retailer. Yeah. They always care about the user first. That's the party line. If the user's happy, then Google are happy. Advertisers, you do what you can to yeah. be happy within these constraints. I look at the high street here yeah. where I'm on in, in Melbourne. This burger place just went out backwards. Yeah. They were gonna they were gonna go bust. It wasn't because of COVID. They're in there at the moment spending yeah. probably a hundred grand fitting out this new place. Mm -hmm. And what is it? It's a place that sells burgers. It's like, mm -hmm. did you do any research? Did you realize that the last guys that lost a ton of money here tried to sell burgers? That doesn't work on this yeah. street. And I think Google can almost see it the same way. You're right. A lot of retailers will not be able to compete. They won't make the margin. They will disappear, but someone else will come to come. fill that vacuum. Somebody else will be willing or to sell that at a loss because they've got a better back end. They've got yep. better nurture. They've got a wider product range. They do a better job with their email marketing, whatever it is. Someone's going to be willing to take a little bit lower, but it's dangerous direction that that heads in because there are tons of really good, wonderful yeah. retailers that won't be able to compete profitably. Ultimately, it's yeah. kind of worse for us as consumers. Yeah. Less right. choice. We have to buy from fewer and fewer retailers, the ones that are left. We end up having to buy whatever it is that they sell and not finding these weird eclectic things. Etsy will, will really flourish Be better, yeah. in that environment. Because even like, remember this whole COVID thing, hey, small businesses, you close down, but you Walmart's targets, you can stay open. That's hurting small businesses. These big companies make even more money. It makes sense because innovation is in these small businesses that then these big tech companies and Amen. big companies come in. I don't know what we can do. As consumers, we can support those weird eclectic yeah. retailers, shout about them from yeah. the rooftops, give them great reviews. And everybody always says, if you yeah. survey a population, they always say they're going to yeah. do the right thing. They always say that they're going to support this and that. Yeah. Ultimately, at the end of the day, most consumers go and do what's best for their wallet. Amazon is going to give them something for 10 bucks cheaper than there and free shipping, and it's going to arrive the next day. I'm sorry, but I'm going over here now. People always say like, I'll support a business. You literally are buying everything from Amazon. I'm yeah. guilty of that. The team yeah. teased me. There's like a package arrives every other day. I'm trying to not press order now until the end of the week. They're Get just the saving packaging thing, yeah. and <laughs> trying to be slightly good for the environment. Keep adding things to the cart during the week. Just yeah. buy once. Even then they I mean, send it to you in 16 different boxes. It's so like, ah. tough. What are you saying for the future of Google ads? What are you super excited about that Google is coming out that you think is going to be helpful for advertisers? Of course, discovery ads is going to be interesting. My personal opinion, I think that a lot of businesses should be still doing YouTube ads. That's probably yes. a big platform. I think that people don't really know about yet. I mean, they do, of course, because YouTube's massive search engine, but I think it's just untapped. Opinion. It is totally untapped. And, yeah. and Google have all of this inventory and they want to monetize it. So you can get some really, really quick net. Now we all know that cheap clicks does not yeah. necessarily mean quality. It needs to be well targeted. It needs to be a good ad. But yes, YouTube is absolutely untapped. I think because there's a perception of it's difficult to create the ad itself, you know, creating yep. a video it's a lot more work than someone just sitting down in front of Canva and chucking together. Yeah, yeah. Australian clients. company too, right? It is indeed. Yeah. Great little company, that one. Yeah, well, yeah. Not so little anymore. If you're serious about YouTube, go hire a guy like Tom Breeze yeah. in the UK. He is, I call him the Ogilvy of YouTube. Yeah. The way he and his team script and edit YouTube yeah. is just the best yeah. I've seen. But Google Shopping too. Please, if you're yeah. a retailer listening to this, please do not ignore Google Shopping. It is to set up certainly than something yeah. like Facebook that there's a lot more moving parts. Google have this weird thing called Google Merchant Center that sits in between. It's your so store. confusing. I've got a 57 point. I'll make sure yeah. we I send it yeah, send to it you. To so us, you yeah. Hook it up in the show notes. But I've got this like 57 point checklist yeah. of every single thing that you need yeah. to do to get your Shopify or whatever store, frankly, yeah, yeah. working with Google Shopping ads because. That's an untapped. There are ridiculously small number of retailers on, on Google Shopping. Yeah, Gmail, forget about Gmail. If you're not yeah. doing that already, then don't bother starting now. But, but do test out discovery cool ads. Shop. 
I think something that I've seen, yes, there's a shopping feed that like Shopify, right? That you can just generate through apps. But I think the best shopping feeds are probably when you make your own custom feed where you can update the title, the pricing and the name. Absolutely. I'm not sure if you guys do that for your agency as well. Absolutely do. Yeah. yeah. I searched the Shopify app store the other day because I needed a yeah. screenshot and there was something yeah. like 829 apps in there when you search Google Shopping now. Mm. It is out of control. We typically use one called Data Feed Watch. It's a paid app. It's going to cost you a dollar a day. Yeah. And that, if you're serious about your retail store, yeah. that should not be a problem. You're absolutely right. Once you start enriching and enhancing the feed, yep. if you can only have time for one thing, then start on your titles. Make your titles better match how people are searching for your yep. product. And as long as you're running shopping campaigns the old school way, then all of that data will be inside your Google Ads account. If we're using smart shopping campaigns, which Google are pushing really, really hard at the moment, I have to say for some retailers, they are a great option, but you don't get any data with them. You don't, you don't. get to see what the search queries are. You don't get to add <laughs> yeah. negative keywords and say, Google, stop yeah. taking my money for that stuff. That That is not my yeah. customer. I don't sell vintage yeah. TVs or secondhand hoodies. Showing ads, so stop yeah. wasting my money. You don't get to see all of that. Yeah. And that's what I mean by this asymmetry of data. Google have all the data and they're starting to yeah. reget. Their machines are better. Let's say your clothing company selling t-shirts. Google knows that we've had maybe a thousand companies selling t-shirts. They've all put this keywords in negative. Stop showing that then. Why are you making companies also spend for that money? You know, it's not the right one. Interesting, loud discussions yeah. with Google engineers about this sort of stuff over yeah. the years. I remember one guy when I was in Singapore, <laughs> yeah. so I got invited to this thing in Singapore. It's great. There's only a few yeah. of us there. I was trying to explain to the global head of Google Display. Terry yeah. was her name. She's a lovely lady. Very, very smart. And I was trying to explain that we all believe that about a third of clicks yeah. are fraud. She just would not accept this notion that there's any fraud on Google Display. It's like, no, 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 we refund invalid clicks. I'm not talking about the stuff that you think is invalid. I'm yeah. talking about the bot farms in yeah. a Stan country south of Russia somewhere that have got these racks of mobile phones yep. lined up with robot fingers pressing yep. things on made for AdSense sites. And they were just like, huh? There's no fraud. Like, why yeah, do I apps. have to wait for the machine to understand that showing my display ads on mobile apps is, is almost always a massive waste of money. Why can't I? Yes, well, yeah. we've, we've thought about how to allow you to, to nudge the machine. Everybody in the industry knows that 99% of that is crap. And this is when smart display was a big thing that they were pushing hard, what, 2017, I'm going to say. Again, it was the same sort of thing. You couldn't add placements. You couldn't start off a campaign and say, hey, this is probably bad. I get that occasionally we're going to miss a positive click and yeah. I get that the machine will catch up eventually, but I'm happy thing, to forego yeah. the occasional good one and get rid of all of this crap. If you would just let me know. If they came and tell what's a bot or farm, even though that's true, like there's whole articles I've read where companies in Russia are just making tons of money. How can we trust them knowing that they're going to do the best decision? And they're just, oh, well, for the best decision, we know. For the bad stuff, you say, you don't know. It just makes no sense. But it has this wonderful phrase, trust, but verify. Google just wants us to trust us. I'm like, well, I like yeah. trust, but verify. Yeah. I would like to see some data. Yeah, this is why you're making the decisions. And there's always people talk about SEO, Google's head of SEO, whatever. He's, no, this isn't an update. People are like, well, I'm seeing 20 sites changing. So it's, oh yeah, actually we did have an update. Why don't you just tell us? It's a weird dynamic where they don't want to say anything until people are just so loud enough. I'm literally seeing every single rank tracker show an update. Maybe one of the reasons why yeah. so many of us in the industry jump up and down at this, because we remember a time when it, yeah. it kind of wasn't this way. They really were do no evil and open with this stuff and asking the community yeah. for feedback. Yeah. I remember this wonderful meeting I had. There were three other agency owners in the room and Google their whole annual Asia pack planning was in Sydney that particular year oh, nice. and they were all in town yeah. for a week and they brought us in for a couple of hours, maybe an afternoon yeah. to yeah. say, what's life like in your shoes? Yeah. And we sort of got to tell the story of being an agency and some of the other agencies, massive agencies that knew absolutely fuck all about yeah. the product itself and how to run a Google ads account. Yeah. They were just, oh, what a chat. Like, <laughs> yes, I have this 500 person agency. Yeah. What are we here to drink? And this wonderful guy, Ian came over afterwards. He said, I can tell you're a product geek, aren't you? Like, I'm the product geek. I'm in charge of Google ads and yeah. about six other things worldwide. Here's my card. Let's chat. This clearly is not a product discussion. This yeah. is about strategy. Just, and it was wonderful to get that kind of, we would have a webinar every couple of months. Oh, just that's nice. Yeah. 
and he would show me the roadmap and we'd talk about what's coming and I'd say, well, this isn't going to work because of this or we're going to yeah, do yeah. this on our side because of this and it was so good, but That's it good. wasn't really open then. Now it feels much more corporate yeah. and political and we're being told what we need to be told to pat us on the head. And no, we'll give you just <laughs> enough information. To keep yeah. you spending, just to yeah, keep yeah. coming back for more. All right, tin hat off. Obviously, it was a great conversation. I think people are like, there's so much to do. But I still think Google Ads is a great platform. There's so many people on it. Absolutely. I would love to sort of end this podcast with Mike. Where can people go and maybe learn more about your book and yourself and your company if someone wants to work with you? The book is everywhere that good books are sold. So start with Amazon or your local bookstore, actually. Yeah, don't yeah. go to Amazon. Go to your local bookstore. Yeah. And they'll say, what? Never heard of it. Bloody, no, but then go back to Amazon and buy it. Start there. If you want to learn more about Google Ads, we probably updated, I'm going to say like 60, 70% of the book this time okay. around. It's only two, three years since the last ep- uh, edition came out, but so much has changed. So start there. If you want to learn more about Google ads, so I train a few hundred agencies mm-hmm. how to do Google ads better and how to grow their agency. That's at agencysavvy.com. Come and find oh, us, perfect. check us out. Yep. But if, yeah, if you are running Google ads, if you would love a second pair of eyes over your Google ads account, I'll tell you the issues and opportunities that I see there. Every, I'm going to say one in 10 times I do one of those audits. I will say, look, whoever's running this for you, they're doing a bang up job, a couple of little things here, but they're doing great. Carry on. More than happy to give that to you as well and look over the account. So find us at websavvy.com. Dot au and you'll find i don't know there's a form on there that you can fill in your details yeah. and hit us up and i'm on facebook facebook.com slash mike roads i'm not on twitter much these days oh but, you're not um, i love twitter it's my favorite i still use it for a lot of industry news but i'm not nearly as active posting on there it's just a time suck I kind of stay off that as much as possible guys remember that's web savvy dot com dot au and you can call them too i think that you guys have a live chat as well yep we do. mike your book is awesome i think almost every Thank person you. has probably done google ads has probably read the book or at least has a copy there for reference flipping through i definitely okay. recommend every listener to just get your book it's amazing and it's almost everywhere mike thanks for coming on the podcast i really appreciate it love chatting with you i love your energy so exciting to talk to you but anything else mike that was an absolute pleasure thanks for the conversation kevin it's been really fun thank you